genocidal fallout. And this article comes to us from The Nation. The headline reads, I can no longer justify voting for Joe Biden in 2024. Nick and I have been saying that it feels like the establishment had no idea that there were so many pro-Palestinian people, free Palestinian people. It feels like they're shocked about the the protests in the United States and worldwide. Or maybe they at least they're shocked at the intensity and the frequency of it. Maybe that's what they're shocked about. But let's get into this Nation article. And here's a snippet. Joe Biden has worked hard to provide support to Israel by denying the extent of the terror and to suppress knowledge of the war crimes he sanctioned. He deployed his Secretary of State to entreat Qatar to stop Al Jazeera's journalists from bearing witness to Gaza's convulsions, and he has sought to extinguish the memory of the dead by casting doubt on the number of lives lost the number of people Israel has killed. And so I wonder, what sense is there in an argument that the values of a lesser evil when the evil is still so evil? How can I possibly vote for a president that actively sanctions a genocide that provides support to Israel as it destroys a people? That simple answer is, I can not. Here is the full article that we're going to jump in right now. The subtitle, For Years, Ahmed Moore Rationalized Voting for Democrats as the Lesser of Two Evil. Now, Biden's unequivocal support for Israeli war crimes has destroyed that argument for him. And that's them almost em- embracing as if they're a, almost like a romantic embrace, as close as a romantic embrace. That's a better way of saying it. Uh, it may not be obvious, but Arab Americans have never felt naturally at home in the Democratic Party. I suspect that our experience tracks with that of other minority groups who've experienced marginalization and racism here in the United States. At least since the Clinton presidency, the party's agenda has exhibited centrist status quo tendencies. And for us, the status quo has been a source of harm, an ossified state of indifference to our needs and calls for injustice. I first had serious doubts about Joe Biden when I learned he self-identified as a Zionist. For me, as a Palestinian American and for the millions of Palestinians living through apartheid, Zionism isn't a way of seeing the world. It's a political theory that establishes Jewish dominance over the people and land of Palestine, Israel, based on a Jewish majority in that land. It seeks to justify unsuccessfully repeated bouts of ethnic cleansing, occupation, and unequal and in inequality before the law by intent by identifying himself with zionism biden expressly indicates his support for the outcome of these policies a jewish majority state for jews only implicitly he endorsed the policies themselves so if you're brand new to the station if you don't, if you're new to our coverage on this, or if you're new to just electoral politics, there's a huge Arab American presence in Michigan, a huge swing state that the Democrats need to win. And they cannot win with that huge demographic of Arab Americans not coming out to vote for them. They can't win Michigan. So this is not turning out well for. Uh, Joe Biden. Like many in the coalition of progressive minorities that drive the success of the Democratic Party, I arrived at an uneasy accommodation with myself. The moral challenge many of us face in voting for the Democrats isn't new. The Iraq war, which was supported by most of the party's leadership, made it difficult for it to, to vote for Hillary Clinton. The conventional argument admonishing progressives for votes, admonishing progressives to vote for the 
Democrats is you have an obligation to help the poor fight inequality and work for climate justice, racial justice, reproductive rights, and basic uh, democracy. There is only one party in Washington willing to make a contribution to your goal. Therefore, despite Democrats' limitation, which include excessive corporatism and institutional affinity for Israel and neoliberal foreign policy and a w- unwillingness or inability to tax the wealthy, you should vote for the Democrats. You see how much you got to give up to vote for the Democrats? Look how much shit he listed here. Excessive corporatism, institutional affinity for Israel, a neoliberal foreign policy, and willingness or inability to tax the health the wealthy. You're trading all of that to vote for the Democrat for marginal shit. Just doesn't seem like a good payoff. Call it maturity or pragmatism born out of experience, but over the years, I've learned to suppress my deep discomfort with the party's non-progressive policies to vote for Democrats and keep a lesser evil at bay. In 2021, after voting for Jill Stein in two presidential elections, I relented and joined up. Here in Philadelphia, I ran for and won a seat as a committee person in my ward. In that capacity, I worked to turn out voters for John Fetterman. I voted for Joe Biden. I have no intentions of doing so again next year. So the Democratic Party, by supporting this genocidal Israel, is losing support to keep them in power in their own country. And for whatever reason, they believe that's a good trade-off, I guess. Um, this is really going to be a test of progressives. Are you going to stand your ground in solidarity with Palestinians? Or are you going to end up folding to the propaganda in the Trump derangement, ser- uh, de- Trump derangement syndrome narrative that will be heavily pushed uh, the closer we get uh, to the election? But let's continue even still the past three weeks have transformed me i viewed shocking nauseating videos documenting the genocide underway in gaza i've seen the neighborhoods i grew up in eliminated totally i cannot describe the pain of viewing my extended family suffer through state sanctioned terror i cannot describe the horror they're experiencing their awareness of their dehumanization and the agonizing knowledge that they've been abandoned by the cynical world. Now with Gaza in total darkness, literal and metaphorical, I find that I dread the worst. I am justified in expecting it. I continue. And so my focus turns to the lesser evil. Since the current state of atrocities began to unfold, President Biden has worked overtime to deliver 14 billion, is 14 point something billion to be exact, in armament to Israel. He has deployed two warships in the Mediterranean, a menacing specter for Palestinians, even as their homes are being destroyed, as entire families are being buried in mass graves. His ambassador to the United States has rejected calls for a ceasefire and vetoed a resolution calling for one. He has worked hard to provide support to Israel by denying the extent of the terror and to suppress knowledge of the war crimes he sanctioned. He deployed his Secretary of State to Qatar to stop Al Jazeera journalists from bearing witness to Gaza's convulsions. And he... he Uh, has sought to extinguish the memory of the dead by casting doubt on the number of lives lost, the number of people Israel killed. And so I wonder, what sense is there in an argument that values a lesser evil, like you saying lesser of two evils? What sense is there to value the lesser evil when the evil is still so great? Like, So he said, it's not that much less. 
that provides support to Israel. I'm sorry, that's so great. How can I possibly vote for a president that actively sanctions a genocide that provides support to Israel as it destroys a people? The answer is simple. I can't. My choice is not without its consequences. I live in a contested state, one that Biden barely won in 2020. What are the implications of withholding my vote? Will uh, Trump win the presidency? How does that help Palestine, uh, Palestine and Palestinians? And by withholding my vote, am I not hurting the poor and, and immigrants? Am I not contributing to the institutional decay, the end of the de uh, de uh, democracy itself? Each of us struggle with some versions of this ethical challenge embedded within the act of casting an imperfect vote. I, it's not with me because I don't cast imperfect votes. Individually, as people with diverse interests and dif different views on what a world worth fighting for looks like, what a world world what a world worth living in could be, we compromise. We argue and we struggle to do the right thing, to push for the right thing. That's our responsibility in a democracy. Our activism can't not end on the day after the first Tuesday in November of an election. Yet, despite the awareness of compromise, a necessary feature of democracy, each of us defies an ethical limit. Each of us defines an ethical limit to our participation, and I'm going to add this part, to our participation in that vote blue no matter who is what he's saying. There is a limit at a point in which we say, I refuse. For me, that point is now. It is a line in the sand drawn through the Gaza Strip where the anguished cries of innocent people serve as a pit, as a pitiful dire for the dead. It is a line in the sand marking the lightness graves of 3,457 children. Supporting Israel, supporting a genocide, supporting an occupation has its consequences that Joe Biden is seeing. We don't live in the same world of 1947 where there was no internet. There was no international solidarity that can be seen, visibly seen, because we can share peer to peer and go around the gatekeepers. We have internet now. We can see there's other people that feel the same way we do about this, and we can see it in the protests that have materialized. Don't let Trump derangement stop you from withholding your vote over this issue, because this is an issue you should not be voting for the people who are funding this. You are complicit if you support this in 2024. So you are caught between losing democracy or supporting a genocide. And I will lose a democracy in a day, any day over supporting a genocide because the genocide, those people never coming back. You can start another country anytime. You can start up a new country. That's my final words on that article. Let me see if I had anything else to share. And this one is from Nick. I'll actually be show Nick first before I... There needs to be a regime change in order to implement democracy in the United States because this is a MSNBC poll. All voters, should the U.S. call for a ceasefire? All voters, 66%. Democrats, 80%. Uh, Republicans and independents are very similar, 57 and 56. But look at Democrats, and you see why Joe Biden has a problem. And then there's this headline, Biden's big problem with the left on Israel. And it was shown in that 80% of Democrats saying they think there should be a ceasefire. The president has seen a backlash from young and progressive voters over the war as the issue heats up on college campuses. And I'll read a little snippet from this article. The administration's recent shift in rhetoric shows how they are trying to handle the blowback they, are, they have received from progressive and young voters. While Biden continues to voice unequivocal support for Israel, 
he has urged Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to accelerate aid to Gaza and emphasize that Israel needs to protect civilians in Gaza as, as the Palestinian death toll continues to rise. The war has led to the death of 14 Israelis and more than 8,000 Palestinians, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. But the administration has still not gone as far as some on the left have advocated for. National Security Spokesman John Kirby reiterated Monday that the White House does not support a ceasefire, saying that it would only benefit Hamas. Really, it wouldn't benefit all the dead civilians? The Biden administration, seeking to avoid a widening conflict, believes that any wavering in U.S. support for Israel could further destabilize the region. Let's continue with another receipt, this headline here. Why the war in the Middle East is politically risky for Biden. This is not looking good for Biden. There's also a snippet from here. This one is from The Hill. This loss of support, of support from members of his own party reflect the fact that sympathy for the Palestinians now is greater among self-identified Democrats than is support for Israelis, meaning there's more Democrats who support. Self-identified Democrats support, there's more support in the Palestinian corners than there is for Israel. Once a reliably pro-Israel group a March 2023 Gallup survey found that after a decade in which Democrats have shown increasingly affinity towards the Palestinian, their sympathies in the Middle East now lie more with Palestinians than Israelis, 49 to 38. That's an 11 percent gap outside of any margin of error. So this is where Joe Biden has come into uh, a bit of a dilemma and I don't see how he's going to get out of it. 